Once constructed, communication satellites must be placed into a geosynchronous orbit. To accomplish this, rockets are used to break the bonds of Earth's gravity and transport the satellite into space. Once released from the rocket, the satellite's own liquid apogee motor is used to propel it to the 22,300-mile altitude required for geostationary orbit. The satellite reaches its orbit through a series of elliptical passes around the Earth, firing its liquid apogee motor at precisely the right time to boost it into an even higher orbit until it reaches its goal, a geostationary orbit. Once its desired orbit is reached, the satellite's antennas and solar panels are deployed and its systems are tested all communication satellites used for television and radio are in geostationary orbits. This means they remain above the same spot on the Earth as it rotates. Other satellites are in what is called geosynchronous orbit, which means that they revolve around the Earth at the same rate as the Earth, but not necessarily over the same spot. In order to maneuver in space, the satellite uses thrusters, or maneuvering jets, to both position and align the satellite, as seen here. These thrusters are used to keep the satellite in place as it is pulled and pushed by gravity by both the Earth, the Moon, the Sun. The lifetime of a satellite is many times measured in the amount of fuel it has. Once a satellite uses all its fuel, it is unable to maintain its position in space as well as its orientation towards the Earth and can no longer be used. The typical lifetime of a satellite is 10 to 15 years. A small amount of fuel is always kept in reserve, so as the satellite reaches the end of its lifetime, it can be maneuvered out of geostationary orbit, usually a few hundred miles further out. This leaves another slot for a replacement satellite and we make sure this one does not crash into any others. This area is called the satellite graveyard and several hundred satellites reside there where they spin and tumble out of control as they have no more fuel left to control themselves. To conserve its fuel, a satellite is kept in a holding pattern centered around its designated place in space. A figure eight pattern can be used as a minimum amount of fuel is required to keep it centered within its box. Each geostationary satellite is given an area 100 kilometers on each side to maneuver within. This imaginary box keeps the satellite separated and on target. Since the satellites remain over one spot above the Earth, they rotate with it as the Earth passes from day to night. Today, there are about 1,000 operational satellites orbiting the Earth, along with thousands of pieces of space junk, mostly composed of older satellites and pieces of them. This yellow ring shows the satellites that are in geostationary orbit. The satellites between the two red rings are either in inclined orbits or are part of the satellite graveyard. 
Here is a typical journey of a satellite signal coming from an uplink station on the west coast being received at a satellite in geostationary orbit 22,300 miles in space and then turned around and transmitted back to the Earth's surface. In this case, being received at a downlink station on the east coast of the United States. Where the signal again is turned around and transmitted back up to a satellite over the Atlantic Ocean. Again, the signal is received by a satellite in geostationary orbit and turned around and sent back down to the Earth's surface. This time it is received at a downlink station just outside of London, England. 